Ever since we were children cutting snowflakes out of paper, we've had a fascination with these six-sided marvels of creation. Today I have for you a project where you can make your own on a candle holder and allow the light to shine through for a lovely Christmas, holiday, or winter decoration. Hey there creative people, Sandy here. Welcome to another polymer clay video at keepsakecrafts.net. This project begins with a straight-sided candle holder. Now, you can choose any candle holder you want. Of course, you can adapt these directions to make a candle holder any size, little votive candle holders or bigger ones, but you will find that a nice straight-sided one is definitely easier to cover. You, you can do the other ones, the ones with shapes. They're just trickier, they take a bit more time. So I'm going to demonstrate on this one. And I have another one that's almost the same size, but it doesn't have a foot. And you can find these all at your local craft store. They're usually under $10. I think this was on sale for $4. You want to decide just how many snowflakes you want to put on yours and what size you want those snowflakes to be. So I'm going to measure around. And this is, this is a little bigger than my other one. So you'll have to do just a little bit of math if you want some even spacing, or you can eyeball it. Here's my other one. I'm in the middle of it. I'm going to show you more on this later. This one is 11 and a quarter inches in circumference. It's three and a half inches in diameter and four inches tall. Like I said, just a little smaller than this one. But just to give you an example of the math, I decided I wanted to space three snowflakes around it because I didn't want to be looking directly through to one on the other side. And I decided if I made my snowflakes two and a quarter inches times three, that's six and three quarter inches. The leftover space is four and a half inches. And if you divide that by three, you have an inch and a half between each snowflake. Like I said, you don't have to go through all the math. I just wanted to kind of have them spaced evenly and not have, you know, two here and one over there. So it, it's good to do the math and just take a tape measure and measure and do a little dividing. So the next step is to choose what colors you want in clay. I chose a combination, you saw it on that other one I just showed you, of rose gold glitter, translucent and white just thought it would be a really pretty wintry look that wouldn't just say Christmas. It could, it could stay out all winter. Again, it depends on the size of candle holder you want to cover. To cover one this size, you're going to need about a total of two ounces of polymer clay rolled out on the thinnest setting of the pasta machine, a number nine, somewhere under a millimeter thick. What I did was I used a quarter block of the rose gold glitter and a quarter block of white and a half a block of pardo translucent. And I put a little bit of translucent in with the glitter and a little bit of translucent in with the white. And then I have some of the translucent all by itself. And this is a pretty basic polymer clay mixing technique that I do a lot. If you're working with pardo and you're finding it annoying, like it does things like this, it, there's nothing wrong with your pardo. It just behaves differently than other polymer clays. I'll give you a link to an article that Ginger Davis Ullman at the Blue Bottle Tree wrote on dealing with pardo. And it made a, it was a game changer for me in dealing with this because I probably wouldn't ever have used it again if I hadn't read her article and understood it a little better. So let me just demonstrate with the rose gold and the white because you can do this with as many colors as you want, or as few as two. You just roll all of your colors out into logs, and the size will depend on how much clay you have. This is just a small sample that I had left over. Uh, you, you'll obviously need more to cover a candle holder this size. And you just start twisting them together. And the more you twist, the finer these stripes get. You know, I thought I had my acrylic roller down here, but I don't. So, oh look, here's a glass roller. <laughs> I probably could have twisted that a bit more to get finer stripes. But you just, you get stripes 
and then you roll it through your pasta machine and you fold it in half and you roll it through until you get something like this where you have really fine stripes kinda smudgy looking you just keep rolling it through it only takes maybe three or four times through the pasta machine to get this look with your clay here's some I did in different colors this time I used Primo white translucent a half a block a quarter block of Primo Jungle and a quarter block of Primo 18 karat gold. I think this is really pretty and Christmassy looking. This is a full two ounces of clay and I did the same thing. I mixed a little bit of the translucent in with the green to lighten it, a little bit of the translucent in with the gold and then the rest of the translucent. So I had three logs, rolled them together just the way I just showed the, you. Rolled them out in sheets in the pasta machine and then rolled it out into a good size sheet. Now in this example I covered the entire candle holder with the sheets of clay. You don't have to do that. You can just cover some of it. You don't have to cover it from edge to edge. You do have to be a little careful with it because it's so thin it will want to tear and kind of be uncooperative. And then you just very carefully lay it on your glass. It's kind of tricky doing this under the camera for you and that's not straight. If I were upstairs at my work table doing this I would roll it more like I roll a cane where I I wrap the the center, in this case the glass, along the strip of clay. Try to get out the air bubbles because if they stay, well, they're going to stay. They'll be there. And you just work your way around. And I will say um, Primo, the Primo translucent is actually a lot more cooperative than the Pardo. The Pardo is clearer, so there's that benefit, but the Primo is definitely easier to work with. So you just work your way around, smoothing out the air bubbles best you can until the whole thing is covered. If you, if you have the power dough, it's best not to do this overlapping technique because I found it didn't, see how this is peeling back very nicely and cooperatively? The power dough didn't do that, so you'll have to fuss with it a little bit more, but what you can do is cut where they overlap and then remove the top piece, lift up the bottom piece, and remove the excess that's underneath. And if you do it gently and not don't stretch out your clay, you should end up with a perfect match. I mean, you could do a wavy line, not that you'd want to, but you'd end, you end up with a perfect match. And again, you want to go through and get rid of all these air bubbles. To trim it, if you have a nice straight-sided candle, it's really easy to just run your blade right along that edge. And of course, like I said, if I was doing this not on camera, I would be taking much more time to do a nice, neat job and get rid of all this mess. But that's the basic of it. Which I'm sure you could probably figure out for yourself, but there you go. And the same with the top. You can trim it flush or you could do like a wavy line, which is kind of pretty. I hope that this video is inspiring you to go create your own snowflakes. If you enjoy my teaching, then you might consider getting bonus tutorials for yourself by becoming a patron. My patrons have the opportunity to get up to two bonus tutorials every month. And you can check that out at patreon.com slash Sandy So now the candle holder is covered and ready for snowflakes. Now I don't know about you, but my eyeballing of this kind of thing is usually not very precise. So I made up templates. These are just concentric circles divided into 60 degree sections. I'll have this template up on Patreon for my patrons. I'm sure you can find, if you Google snowflake template, you can find something very similar. And I have them in a few different sizes so you can do a really big candle holder or little votive holders, whatever suits. But I am going to use the two and a quarter inch one. 
Now before we get started, here's one snowflake I already made. You'll notice that this part of my design is got the straight stripes from going through the pasta machine, but this part doesn't because I thought it just looked a little bit more interesting to have it kind of wavy. It also helped to obscure the seam. Actually, this snowflake I did right at the seam. It's right here, you can tell. I figured I would do my first one, probably wouldn't be my best one, so I did that one near the seam. And I have a big fat knitting needle here. You could use the handle of a brush or any tool. And I'm just rubbing up and down. And see how you get that shift? I think it's really just kind of cool looking. You'll end up with a bit of texture. What you can do to get rid of that is just get some deli paper and smooth it. And you end up with that kind of wavy look, which I like, but do what you like. Now I said I was going to have an inch and a half between each of my snowflakes. So if I Let's see if I set that down in the center. An inch and a half from there is going to be the edge of the next one. And I'm not doing that too precise, but pretty close. Unfortunately, you cannot see through the translucent clay while it's unbaked. And that is the purpose of these templates. You place that on. Now decide if you want your snowflake this way or if you want your line to go up and down this way or if you want it up and down this way. It doesn't matter. I think I'm going to do all mine the same with a single line going top to bottom. You can, I mean, you can place them at any angle that suits you. Then just get a little ball stylus and trace over those lines onto the clay. Once you've done this once, it'll be much easier on subsequent snowflakes because there'll be a groove in the paper that the stylus will just follow into. The reason I'm doing the concentric rings is to help me keep things spaced along these lines. I, Whenever I'm doing something like this, just my eye tends to not keep it even. <laughs> so I, I need all the help I can get. I don't know how well the camera's going to pick it up, but you can see those lines. And by the way, if you end up with any bubbles that you're really not happy are there, just come in, make a stab at an angle, and then roll over it with your knitting needle or brush handle or whatever, and that will just get rid of it. it pushes all the air out. The next thing you'll want are some small cutters. Now how small depends again on the size of the snowflake that you're making. Like I have these, this is the mini geometric set from Sculpey, but most of them really are too big. The ones that I use the most are these little 3 16th ones. This is a 3 16th set. It has a flower, a teardrop, a circle, and a heart and I use the teardrops and then I just hand cut and I, I did a couple other things. So let's see, let's try the circle. Is that the circle? Yes. And we'll just do like a big one right at um, these intersections. And do remember that your glass is round so kind of rock your cutter a little bit. so that you get contact all around. It'll help you get a cleaner cut, but if your cuts aren't perfectly clean, we can neaten them up in a bit. And then come in with your... I found the craft knife is the easiest thing to use to pick those pieces out. I've also seen people use pencil erasers to shape their own cutters, which you could do. But if you don't feel like bothering with that, you can also just freehand. 
So I'm going to go along like this line here, just freehand, kind of a marquee shape. And this is what I mean by designing your own snowflake. It's very similar uh, in process and feel to making a mandala. The main difference being that we have we do six because snowflakes are six sided. And you can do winter colors. But you, of course you can make these any colors you want. The only color I wouldn't do is yellow. That just seems wrong. <laughs> but you do whatever you want. <laughs> and so you get the idea. That's what I did over here. Now notice in the center here, I just made an absolute mess in the center there. It was ridiculous. It was so bad. And that's why you saw that cutout of this piece over here. You can see the little flower cut out. It's convenient that there is one shape in this set that is six-sided, this little six-sided flower. And so I cut one out and filled in the mess I made here. So remember, it's not just subtractive, it's also additive. I think probably one of my favorites to use is the teardrop, just because it's such a nice, graceful shape. And we can do that you know, anywhere you want, maybe in between right on that line in between the circles. If you're interested in the supplies I use, click on the little I or the tag in the upper right of the video or the link in the description box to go to my blog post where I always have a complete supply list with links to products. Can you see? I, I still don't know if you can see the lines that were embossed in here, but it's really helpful for getting the spacing pretty good. Mine is absolutely not perfect because I don't know. I try to make things perfect. Like some people, you know, their work is known for being precise. And I always, I try that and then my hand goes woo! And, and that's it. Forget it. It's no longer precise and I kind of give up on trying. <laughs> I like an organic look. At least that's what I tell myself. No, I do. I actually do. If any of you know of a source for cutters that are you know, bigger than these, but smaller than these, that would be fantastic. Let me know in the comments. There actually has been more than one occasion where I've wished for them. And no, I haven't bothered to make my own with, that's what I'm starting to say, pencil erasers. You pop the eraser out and you end up with this little metal ring that you can use pliers to shape. One of my favorite looks, actually, with all of this is, where'd that embossing stylus go? Is just to take the stylus and make dots. And if you just press it in, you get a little dot. I think it gives it a lacy, airy look to do this. Now, so I'm going to switch to the bigger side. You can go up here and make pretty big dots. You can see here I even came out beyond and, and just made little dots and made rows of them and it really gives it a very delicate look. And I, I did the same thing on the little flower in the center just to kind of open it up a little and lighten it a little bit. Now when you're done, you may see the, like the pieces that didn't lift out cleanly look a little bit messy. And all you need to do is get a little silicone or rubber shaper and go in and clean that up. You can also neaten up your corners if they're not quite the way you want them to be. You can fix your shapes. So like these shapes that I cut, I might straighten out just a little bit, make them a little bit neater, and it softens those cut edges. Don't worry too much about that quite yet. We'll fix that in a moment. But just to clean up your glass so that you don't have all these stray bits of clay left on there that are going to show once you light a candle on the inside. You want your glass to be pretty clean and your shapes to be fairly neat. Once you're pretty satisfied with your snowflake, which I'm not quite done with this, but 
Once you're happy with it, you'll notice that you can still see the lines from the template that we embossed in with the tool for guides. To get rid of those and also to smooth out a lot of your edges, just take a clean piece of deli paper and rub. And you'll be able to feel it through the paper. You'll be able to feel the ridges from the embossing and you'll be able to feel when it's all smoothed out. You just go over. I might have to go over that a little bit more in some spots. And if your holes, you found they got filled in by that pressing, you can take your rubber tip tool or your ball tip tool and go back in and fix them. And then make sure you clean up your edge or plan to add some kind of like a twisted rope border. And when it's all done, you just go ahead and bake it. I'm back with my candle holder all baked. And I thought of a few more things as I was finishing up the last two snowflakes. One thing is that you can use your cutters just to make the impression like I did here with those little flowers, not very evenly, but you get the idea that you can just make the impression without lifting off the cutout and that gives you that line of light coming through, but you don't have a big gap. So that might be another way of using some of those cutters that are a little bit too large for the scale you're working in. What I did over here was I used the very smallest oval cutter, but I thought the opening was still a little bit big, so then I went back in and filled it in with one of the teardrop shapes, and the same thing this flower in the center was a little big, so I filled it in with a little flower. And it doesn't really matter that this is five pointed and that's six pointed, it's fine. Now once you're done baking, you may find that there are areas that perhaps you didn't clean up as well as you would have liked. It's tricky because as you're working on it, you're trying to hold the thing from the inside and not mess up the rest of the clay. So it can be hard to see and hard to get it all. So feel free to just take a craft knife and gently remove any areas and the clay cuts really easily. It's pretty thin and you can just cut off little bits that didn't get cleaned up. Just make sure you do it a small amount at a time. Don't try to, you know, like really fix this oval shape here with a big cut because it's really easy to cut too much very quickly. If you find that you wish your candle holder was a little bit smoother in appearance, you can sand it. The only thing you want to watch for are areas like these little things, which may pick, you may be able to actually pick them right off, but if they come off, just reapply them with some super glue. If it's not going to get rough use, these will probably be just fine. Then you can fill it with a candle and enjoy, but I'm going to do something I think looks even nicer. I have here a string of fairy lights. The candle is only one point of light, but the fairy lights, of course, is a whole strand. And isn't that pretty? Let me turn off my lights. And there you can see just how pretty that is, shining through the translucent clay. 